The dictionary defines the homemaker as one who manages a household, especially a wife and mother. And in this generation, work in the home has been largely abandoned because of the demand for convenience and consumerism. Therefore, domestic incompetence, and yes, I said incompetence, including the conscious rejection of household tasks, has become very commonplace. I had to iron this morning, and you know I still know how to do that. But there are many women, I have students who've never used an iron. There are reasons why the homemaking career is important enough to demand a woman's diligent preparation, her foremost commitment, her full energies, and her greatest creativity. A homemaker does her job without the enticement of a paycheck or a title but she cannot be duplicated for any amount of money. According to the wise Solomon in the Old Testament, she is worth far more than rubies. A very famous American interior designer said some years ago, homemaking is not employment for slothful, unimaginative, incapable women. It has as much challenge and opportunity, success and failure, growth and expansion, perks and incentives as any corporate career. How tragic that in our modern culture, patterns for a healthy and happy family life are quickly disappearing. Few women realize that what great service they are doing for modern civilization when they care for the family shelter and nurture their children. A good society and a good home are inextricably entwined. You cannot have one without the other. Homemaking, in my view and understanding, is not something you fit into the leftovers of life as you would serve up the remnants of a meal. It is not barely getting by as in merely maintaining a home base where your family comes in to unfill and fill again and go out. It is not skimping on time with family to splurge on spending for possessions. It is not giving up the beautiful and comfortable and memorable for more wealth and peer approval. It is not the abandonment of simple pleasures or amusements that bring delight to you and your family. Homemaking begins with feeding, clothing, sheltering the family, the absence of which would put the ones you love most as hungry, threadbare, and in need of home and affection. And the very problems all the governments of the world and the activists are all trying to solve very unsuccessfully, I might add. And God designed a mother, a wife, to do just that. But by no means is that all there is to this noble pursuit of homemaking, which reaches to include the most interesting and worthwhile endeavors known to woman or man. A homemaker is prepared from creation to provide comfort, order, relaxation, peace, and restoration in an atmosphere especially planned to provide for her own family a loving center to which everyone in the family will be drawn. Truly, there should be no place like home. Single women also should be inspired and fully equipped to make their homes prepared and welcoming. A woman should never feel ashamed for wanting home to satisfy her nesting and her nurturing instincts. Both husband and wife achieve their respective individuality by assuming different roles for which each is needed and on which neither intrudes. When a wife chooses to allow her husband to support the family, she can turn her ingenuity and creativity toward the very best use of family resources and to producing a lifestyle even better than an additional salary would buy. The homemaker, as in the case of the commander of an army or as the leader of any enterprise, will accomplish her goals because of her positive spirit and attitude and with the help of her household in proportion to how she performs her duties, intelligently, thoroughly, and enthusiastically. 
The well-being of her entire family is dependent on her own joyful spirit, positive attitude, and faithful commitment to her task. Too many women rush headlong into a career outside the home, determined to waste no time or effort on the ordinary work in the house, or babysitting their own children, but rather seek to achieve position and possessions by directing all their talents and energies toward professional pursuits outside the home. Indeed, many perfect jobs may come and go during a woman's childbearing years, but only one will absolutely never come again, and that's the job of rearing her own children and allowing them the increasingly rare opportunity to grow up with happy memories of spending time at home under the care of the one who loves them the most. A woman's career can easily serve as a surrogate husband, as during the hours she is ruled by her employer's preferences, because the wife loses much of her flexibility with the receipt of a paycheck. A husband must bend and adapt his schedule for emergencies with children, for receiving repairmen in the home, etc. This leaves two employers without completely committed employees, and it leaves the family's children without a primary caretaker utterly devoted to their personal needs and nurture. Many women, as do I, still see the paycheck as an inadequate trade for the sights and sounds and taste of home. Though some see their paychecks as representing independence and achievement, such compensation requires an exchange taking the time formerly allotted to work for the family in private, personal ways. This is not to say that there are never times when a woman should seek employment outside her own. Nevertheless, we dare not embrace a day when a woman's employment outside the home becomes the rule rather than the exception leaving the few to give primary attention to what is at the foundation of all society, caring for the home and producing the next generation. Homemaking, if pursued with energy, imagination, and skills, has as much challenge and opportunity, success and failure, growth and expansion, perks and incentives as any corporate position, and with the plus that you're working for the people you love the most and the ones you want to have the best care. After examining your family priorities, every woman must determine that she will govern her life choices, trumping, as they say, the culture, overruling the culture, and the opinions of others, as well as even her own personal goals and ambitions. Let home be the launching pad for self-expression and self-improvement. Individual talents and giftedness are sometimes ignored and overshadowed or even belittled in the secular workplace. But at home, you can unveil creativity and imagination to blossom into individualized expressions which ultimately may become valuable far beyond the borders of your home. Never should a committed homemaker quench her creative pursuits. Never. Rather, she should strive to work beyond the mundane basics in the home. Home should become a seedbed of creativity, not only for the homemaker, but for the children and the whole family. If your decision is that you should devote full energies and time to managing your household, then I encourage you to attack this challenge with all your creativity and giftedness and truly make the assignment a career, a professional pursuit in which you give your very best to your family and to the extension of your family's influence on society for the generations to come. Remember that balance in your life is not so much fitting everything into your life, but rather understanding the priorities that govern all that goes into your life. God give us more homemakers.